Hey guys and welcome back to another YouTube video and this is a video on the West Coast vs Carlton 108 point loss so the second one of the Saturday night snooze fest and how it was basically just Carlton had one two three four five six seven eight guys go over 100 eight guys go over 107 that is huge so um, we're going to look at that look at who's an actual option and why they're an option I think and Let's get into the video, so before we do it, uh, remember to like and subscribe, turn the notification bell on so you know when I actually upload, as um, these videos are a little bit delayed, I think I did a little bit less recording on the Saturday, Sunday, and so they're going to come out a three per day, and then into, so Wednesday will be the first day that I do my team review, and um, also um, probably cash cows by then, and then Thursday we'll do... Um, my video on, my videos on t trade targets, I think, and probably predictions, and then you've got my team review, my team preview, etc., and those videos will come out, so let's get into the video. So, first up, you have Tim Kelly, 108, did the job basically here, you can see, um, good second quarter, which propelled him, didn't do much else, basically. Um, Duggan had a really good first quarter, then decided to not play for the second and third quarter, and then came back in the fourth, and he's looked pretty good, to be honest, and um, he's done good enough to hold at the moment, and he's a guy that probably might go next week, but I might decide to try and... Um, there might be other guys that I look to get out, as if you see here. Um, he might be a guy that goes next week, to be honest, or I could try and get another rookie off field, but uh, we'll see with that. I might try and upgrade him, but save a little bit of cash somewhere to um, get, um, this is a little bit off as I need Holland on field, so um, that'll be changed. I can do this, actually, that's much better. There we go, so, and obviously don't take into account that captaincy there for Sincotta, but um, yeah, I might try and do a um, Duggan and um, Philippu out to get up to a massive, um, could probably almost do a massive midfielder as I can just put Rosie back and then um, put um, someone else. So I just want to look at Duggan's break even again. It looks, it's going to look pretty good, isn't it? 77 break even. So he might again go up another 15, 20K again um, and be almost a keeper for another week. And that'll help me stack a little bit more cash on and get rid of Philippu, get rid of Davey, and then be able to get Duggan up to someone huge. And Noah Long should be back by then to help um, his cash chain go along. And Samson Ryan is almost a trade out sometime soon as um, Nank comes back. But Duggan is holding his spot at the moment and doing exactly what I need from him. I mean, if we look at West Coast kick-ins, because he's been doing a little bit of it, um, got two kick-ins, so a little bit down because Herm was back, but still two kick-ins, so two, so six free points from that, um, and I mean, Carlton did kick 14 behind, but, you know, he was getting a lot of, he probably benefited from 20 points from just kick-ins and marks off kick-ins, etc., so got to the 96, Hunt's been doing really well for anyone that got him, he's up to 90, he got to 93, smashing his break even, O'Neill Witherden's just a terrible, uh, just a sort of mid guy this year, doesn't seem like he's doing too well, Jones, um, Williams, Hearn only got 60, including 24 from kick-ins, so he only got 36 around the ground, they didn't kick it around the back as much, Wooderman had a down game, so good that they didn't pick him, Petrocelli, Jimby, another down game, so he can go now, get out of the team, um, Darling, Gaff, West, Edwards, I think Jimby's going to be the guy in like two to three years that's going to break out and be a Tom Green type player, I reckon, but um, it's his first year, so um, I think he's just going to probably end up averaging around 60 this year, and he'll, he'll take a couple years, but when he gets the the tank and the, um, the feel for the um, AFL game, he will go up and average, um, and average 100, I think. He can easily do that, especially... I don't think he'll take the rail path. I think he can easily take um, eight marks. I mean, not eight marks, like four or five marks a game and like six or seven tackles. And that already gets him close to 50 points itself. And then he only needs 50 off disposals, which is pretty simple. If he has um, if he has 10 to 15 um, 
handballs, then he only needs about seven to eight kicks a game. So he just he could easily be a guy that averages um, 100, 105 off only about 25 touches. Then you've got Darling, Gaff, West, Edwards, Allen. Didn't do too well, did he, this game? Kicked two goals in the end in the last quarter to help it out. Um, Clark, Foley, Cully, and no one else really interesting. And then you come over to Carlton, and um, Nick Newman had a worst quarter of 40, uh, 31, but had a 57 point second, which was huge. And he was on 95 at halftime, and really could have pushed for 100 in the half, which would have been ridiculous. Kerno kicked nine goals, three, including one, two, three goals, two in the third, and two goals here, two goals here, and... So that would put him two goals here, two goals, one in the first as well. So he was ridiculous again. Not an option fancy-wise, I don't think. Shera was another really good game from him. 100 points in the second and fourth quarter alone, and then two down quarters. So that's really ridiculous. Akers, again, another huge um, game from him. 39 points third quarter. Like, they put up 2,077 fancy points. Um, Walsh, another ridiculous game from him. Hewitt, another pretty rounded game from him. Cripper, another good game as well, as he went pretty ridiculous. And then Kemp here. Kemp's a guy that I think we can talk about because 51 point last quarter, um, he did have four intercept marks. He is a key defender, so that is a worry. But he did have nine marks outside of that, and one, um, two, three, four, five, um, six marks came in the last quarter. So he still had seven marks, and... 56 going into the last quarter so at like 440k and a break even let's see of Kemp it's probably going to be about five or something a break even of nine do you jump on that um I don't know if you do that would be sort of a risk given that they think I think they have Brisbane next week let's check with Hollands they've got Brisbane then they've got Western Bulldogs then Collingwood Sydney um, Melbourne Essendon Suns into the bye. It's really out. They don't have a good run, really, do they, for the rest of the year? Col- uh, Carlton, that you want to pick someone up that you're um, worried about. Doherty came back and got 94, so he's going to drop in price. Pitnett did all right. Silvani. Fisher had a pretty good game as well. A last quarter blitz from him. Saad got taken off at three quarter time because they were like, this game's boring and we can rest him. S- uh, Weedering, Sincotta did really well again. Um, did Sincotta get more of the marks this week, or was it more of the more of the same from him? Matt Stat nine, eight, four, and six. So I think he can easily be a guy that averages eighty a game or so. Sincotta, which will just help, as he's a rookie that we can rely on because I don't see him getting dropped. I don't see how he can get dropped after this performance. Uh, Mackay, Kerno, Hollands was a little bit annoying that he did outscore Jimby, but it was only by sixteen in the end as he fell apart. Um, I thought he was going to go for the ton and Jimmy was going to go and only score 40 and it was going to be a gap of 60, but I was I was happy that it was only 16 in the end because Jimmy put up a pretty good last three quarters, an all right last three quarters that would have got him to an average of about 70 or so if he'd put that up in the actual game as that was 51 through three. He has a negative one first quarter. So that would have got him to basically high 60s, early 70s if he'd done that throughout the game and that would have been good enough for me um, as it would have allowed some other um, potential outcomes. It would have almost allowed me to get um, Fiorini, I think, and uh, someone like McPherson or someone if he'd um, done that, which was Fiorini and McPherson was probably the option that I really, really wanted, but I'm pretty sure I just cannot get. So Sincotta, Mackay's, um, yeah, doing Mackay things. Sincotta has a minus 20 break even, by the way, so he's like almost... Um, needed if you can just get him anyway at 300k because he's going to go up and go towards that um, 450 500k quickly as um, minus 20 break even if he gets another 80 point game that's another 80k or so that he's going to go up and he's going to skyrocket towards if he puts up 80 80 80 he will get to 500k in the next um, in the next three weeks because he'll have a minus 30 break even game and then That'll lead to, he could go 80k, 90k, 90k quite quickly. And that's that gets him up to like 560k so quickly. Like we saw with um, Harry Sheasel that he was putting up 100-point games, but with a minus 40 break even and 100-point games, he was gaining 110, 120k. So it's around 20k less than the actual um, break even gap. 
and he would be getting a break even gap of around 80 to 90 if he was um if he was having um 80 point games and that would get him up um somewhere close to 70 80k a week and that's just huge for Sincotta as I think his game can translate well to facing um, big teams as well because he has the ability to get points off of tackles has the ability to get points off of marks has the ability to get huge handballs like he had 18 handballs and has the ability to get kicks as well so um, he can easily get um, 10 kicks 10 handballs four and four and that gets him up to 50 plus um, 28 so that gets him up to 78 just 10 10 four and four so that's exactly what I want from him and then yeah so that's pretty much it for that um, game so go back to the main screen that's my review of the Carlton versus West Coast smashing and how Carlton guys you probably want to jump on their rookie guys and not so much their um, big guys as that round 15 or 14 by whatever they have let me just quickly check. Is it round 14? It's a round 15 buy, so the terrible buy round, so you probably don't want any Carlton players at this point. So, yeah, that's the review there of that game, and I'll see you guys in another video. Thanks, guys. Goodbye.